Opal Beaters. Welcome back. It's Gina from OrchidandOpal.com. And today I am here to share with you guys how to make the Glacier Lagoon bracelet that I came up with. This was 100% inspired by the Eureka Crystal Beads Glacier Lagoon collection. It's still available on their website, by the way. Although I will mention that there may be a couple of color substitutions. For example, the honeycombs may be a little bit different, but it should contain pretty much everything you need to make the bracelet, except for the 15 seed beads that I used. So feel free to check out that collection if you haven't already. I will link to that as well as all the materials down below that I'll be using today. Everything you can find on EurekaCrystalBeads.com plus many, many more color variations for all of these materials. Here's a glimpse at everything that you're going to need today though. We will be using 30 of these two hole honeycomb beads. We'll be using about six inches of three millimeter cup chain and that is going to contain 30 of these little rhinestones. We'll be using some size eight demi round Toho seed beads, some 80 Toho seed beads, some 11 O's and some 15 O's. Besides that, you'll need the usual scissors, jewelry pliers, two wire guards, jump rings, the clasp of your choice. And we will be using two beading needles today. And I'll be using some six pound or 0 0.006 inch diameter fire line, but you can use any beading thread of your choice. The bracelet we will be making together today will come out to be about six inches worth of beading. So you can adjust that depending on the size of the bracelet that you would like to make. You can always add an extra jump ring or two to make this area bigger to expand the length of your bracelet. But if you're gonna need the bracelet to be more than about seven and a half inches, then I would suggest maybe just making a larger beaded portion. All right, so the first thing you can do is lay out all of the beads that you'll be using and also pull out one of your wire guards and I've gone ahead and added a needle onto each side of my thread and we'll be using approximately 12 to 15 feet of beading thread today. And then you can pick up your wire guard, start out by feeding both needles through either side and then you'll be pulling this down to the end of your thread, just like that. So you have your fire line or your beading thread looped right around the wire guard. And now I'm gonna split up these threads so I have one on either side of my mat. And on both needles, you wanna start out by doing the same thing. You're gonna pick up six 11 O's and then five of these demi rounds. So pick up that sequence on both sides. And you can pull these both down to your wire guard at this point. And then I'm gonna take my right hand needle, I'm gonna pick up an 11 O, one of my honeycomb beads, two of these 8 O's, another honeycomb bead, and another 11 O. So pick up this sequence and then pull that down to your work. And those honeycomb beads are gonna end up going in this direction. So we have our thread going through one side of those and they're gonna be sitting like this and now we need to join both sides together. So I'm gonna take the left-hand needle and I'm gonna go directly through that 11 O, the honeycomb, the two eight O's, the other honeycomb, and the 11 O that we just added. So pull that side until your thread is tight and then pull on both threads and you end up with something like this and you have both sides coming out of those 11 O's on either side of the honeycomb. So take a minute to get your thread situated again. They have switched sides, so get your left on the left side and the right on the right if that's how you're working. And starting with my right hand needle again, I'm gonna pick up a demi, a 15-0, a demi, a 15-0, one more demi, and then also an 11-0. And I'm going to then be traveling up through the second hole of the honeycomb bead. And pull that. So we just created this little loop pattern on the outside of the honeycomb and we also want to pick up two more of these 8 O's, which will also go in between the two honeycombs just like we did between the first holes and then pull that. There you go and then pick up one more 11 O and you'll pull that down to your work. So just like before, your threads are gonna switch places. I'm gonna put this one now on my left side. I'm going to pick up what was my left-hand needle, 
and we need to mirror the beads on this side of the honeycomb over here. So I'm gonna pick up a Demi, a 15O, a Demi, a 15O, and one more Demi. We already have our 11 O's in place. So once you have that sequence on your needle, you're going to loop your needle around and go through many of those beads that you just added. So we're going through the 11 O, the honeycomb, the two eight O's, the second honeycomb, and also the 11 O. And pull those beads right against that other honeycomb and then give both sides a pull so that everything is staying together. This area might look a little bit wide at first, but this will cinch up to the end of your bracelet as we progress into our next steps. So once again, get yourself situated and take your right hand needle and pick up an 8O and an 11O, another honeycomb bead, two more 8Os, another honeycomb bead, and an 11O. So this is the sequence you want. We're gonna be starting another row. You just pull these down to your work once again, and our row is going to be sitting just like this. parallel to the others. Our thread is switching places again, so I'm just gonna put that one on my left side and pick up the other needle that was on my left. Pick up an 8 and that's gonna sit in place in between these two 11 O's. So I'm just gonna swing my needle around and go through the 11 O, the honeycomb, two 8 O's, the honeycomb, and the 11 O that are already in place. I'm gonna pull that. and then pull on both sides of my thread to make sure everything is nice and tight. So just like we did before, we need to create our little loop of beads to go around this honeycomb, as well as finish another row, which is gonna go through the second holes of these honeycomb beads. So let's pick up a Demi of 15, a Demi of 15, and a Demi. And we also need another 11O right here, so let's pick that up too. And that's the sequence that you want to have and you'll go through the second hole of that honeycomb on the right side just pull your thread and let those go right into place around the side of that bead and then you need your two eight o's that are going to sit right in between the honeycomb so pick those up go through the second hole of that other honeycomb bead on the left and pull and then you can pick up one more 11 o and pull that down to your work also. Our thread is switching places again. So that one goes over on the left and I'm picking up the one that was on the left and I need to imitate this side. So just like we did before, picking up a Demi of 15, a Demi of 15 and one more Demi. We don't have anything else we need to pick up at this point. And we can just swing right around and go through all those beads we just added, the 15, the honeycomb, the two eight O's, the next honeycomb, and the 11 O. Give that a pull. And then give both sides a pull so everything's staying nice and tight. And that is how everything should be looking so far. Now you're just gonna continue in the same manner all the way down until you have used up all 30 of your honeycomb beads or have gotten this to your desired length. At that point, we're gonna meet back and we'll continue on with our next steps. All right, guys, welcome back. So this is what it should look like when you have all your honeycomb rows in place. And we're coming out of these 11 O's on either side of these honeycomb beads. I have my left needle and the right needle that I'm holding. And we wanna mirror this other side over here with the other wire guard. So just like we have on the other side, pick up on one needle five of your demis as well as six of your 11 OC beads. And you can go ahead and pull these down to your work. And I'm gonna reposition this so it's a little bit easier to see. All right, I'm gonna take my left needle, I'm gonna repeat that, so five demis and six 11 O's. and pulling those down, there we go. 
So we want to go ahead and add our wire guard at this point. I'm going to take my right hand needle and go through one side of our wire guard and pull this down. And I'm going to loop my needle around the other side and pull it through, making sure the thread sits in the groove of the wire guard. And since I'm already still holding this needle, I'm going to go through the six 11 O's and five demis that are on this left hand side. It's just going to complete a loop here. And it's going to sit a little bit loose for the moment. I'm going to set down my right hand needle. And with my left hand needle that is coming out of these seed beads, I'm going to continue through the wire guard that we just popped into place. Pull that. And I'm going to swing the needle around, go through the other side of the wire guard, as well as the six seed beads and five demis that we just added on this side. All right, so our needle switched places, and I'm just holding this while I pull on either side of the thread to make sure the end is tight on this side. Okay, so I cleaned up my space a little bit. I moved everything except for my 15 O seed beads and I brought over my cup chain because it's at this point that we're ready to start tacking that down in the center of our bracelet. So I'm going to take the right hand needle. We're already coming out of the five demis on this side. Now I'm going to continue just through that 11 O and through the top hole of the honeycomb bead. And I'm going to let my needle come out right at that point. And I'm going to take my cup chain and place it right here at the top. So it's cascading down the center of the bracelet. And we're going to be tacking down each of these sections in between each rhinestone with some 15 O seed beads. So with that in place, pick up five 15 O's. And you're going to go directly across over the top of the eight O's over the top of the bar in between the rhinestones and go through the honeycomb bead, the top hole on the other side and hold the rhinestone cup chain with your thumb and the whole piece with your thumb and your forefinger and just gently pull so that the five seed beads you just added will sit in that groove in between the rhinestones. And as you go, it will get a little bit easier because this will start to sit in place. The first one is always the most difficult just to get started, but there you have it. And now it's up to you, depending on the color of thread that you're using or the color of honeycomb beads, if you want to hide your thread better, you can go all the way through the beads that are looped around the honeycomb. But because I'm using the smoke colored fire line and some of these reflective silver honeycomb beads, nobody's gonna see it unless they're really looking for it. So I'm just gonna swing around and go directly through the next hole of that same honeycomb bead. And go up like that and pull my thread. And once again, we want to tack down the next segment of our cup chain by picking up five 15 O's and going directly over the top of both the eight O's and the cup chain and gently pulling our thread and making sure that our five seed beads are going to sit right in between the two rhinestones. Pull that nice and tight. And as you go, just keep making sure your cup chain is sitting up nice and straight as you pull. Now for this section, we'll go through the 11 O that we get to next. And we'll also go directly through the next eight O. And we will go down through the 11 O and the honeycomb bead. Pull that tight. And now we're ready to tack down another spot. So pick up five 15s. And just like you did before, go directly over the top of the cup chain and the eight O's directly through the next honeycomb bead and pull, making sure your beads sit right over top and take a minute just to make sure your cup chain is sitting straight. So that's what you should have so far. And you're going to repeat the same steps all the way down your bracelet until you get to your last section of honeycombs. 
Our other thread is just gonna be sitting over there hanging out and it will be ready for us to continue with the next steps. All right, so here you can see that we have our cup chain all tacked down and I am coming out of this 11-0 seed bead right here and I'm gonna continue on through these five demis and two of those 11 O's. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that. And this is where we're just gonna tack down this end to our bracelet so it's not sticking so far out. I'm gonna flip this over so it's a little easier to see. I'm gonna go directly through these two 80 seed beads on the end and pull that. You can see it just starts to pull those beads down. And then I'm going to go through the two 11 O's right before those five demis and gently pull that. And that's cinching down that end too. And I'm gonna continue on through the 11 O and also through that honeycomb bead. I'm gonna go through the two 8 O's again and also through the next honeycomb bead. Then through the 11 O and I'm gonna loop around this whole section one more time. So I'm just gonna go through all those demis. I'm gonna go through these two 11 O's. Instead of shooting over through the eight O's, I'm gonna go through this top section once more. So I'm gonna go through those four 11 O's. And this is just for reinforcing this end, I'm gonna go around the wire guard and through the other side and down through those next four seed beads. And then through the two 11 O's that we have left right there and through all those demis. And now at this point, I am going to knot off this piece of thread and we're gonna finish our bracelet using the other one that's on the other side. So just make yourself a half hitch knot, then go through a few beads, repeat that process three times or however much you want. If you have additional thread and you wanna weave back through your bracelet even more, you can feel free to do that. All right, I'm gonna end this right here and clip off that portion of thread, get rid of that one, and then we will pick back up with the needle that is on our other side. And what I want you to do, we're coming out of the same 11-0 that we were coming out of on that side. Repeat the same steps to tack down this end of the bracelet that you just did, and then we will move on. All right, so once you have this side tacked down also, I'm coming out of the top of this honeycomb bead. What you wanna do is you wanna make your way over to one of these 15 O's that's right on the other side of the honeycomb. So it doesn't matter if you start on this side or this side, the steps will be exactly the same, but you wanna start out by coming out of one of those 15 O's, and then you're gonna pick up an 11 O, a demi, and an 11 O. Once you have those on your needle, you're gonna be going through the very next 15 O that you get to on the end of that group of five right next to the next hole of your honeycomb. So you're just popping those three beads in between the 15 O's. And this is what you're gonna do all the way around. So pick up another 11, a demi, and an 11 O, and go up through the next 15 O that you get to on the end. And just keep pulling that nice and tight and repeat. So pick up those three beads, go up through, the next 15 and pull. And you can see this little almost slightly frilly design that it is creating around the cup chain. That's gonna keep your cup chain straight, but also give it a really nice border. So continue with these steps all the way to the other side of your bracelet and we'll meet back before we turn around. All right, so here is one entire side done. And when you're coming out of your final 15 0 right there, you can just cut right across, go through the next four, just like that. And that's where you can start on your other side. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. You can see as you pull this tight, it starts to get the slight bend to it, which actually works out really well. It makes it more of like a cuff and it conforms well to the wrist. So let's do our first one together. I'm gonna pick up an 11 out, a demi, an 11. And once again, go through 
the very next 15-0 that we get to. Pulling this nice and tight, and you can see how that wraps these beads right around each of these rhinestones. So continue on completing this entire side, and then we will meet back again. All right, so here are both sides done. It's looking really good, I think. I'm coming out of this last 15-0, and I'm just gonna go directly across through those other four just to finish off this section and I'm going to put my needle through the other side. I just feel like it's a little bit easier to knot off my thread from this side for some reason. So I'm just going to go through these two 8-0s, make a knot right there, go through a couple more beads and make another knot and so on and so forth. Just like you did before with your other thread, you'll make as many little knots as you want or continue to weave through as much as you want and then you'll just clip off your thread. And then we will add our jump rings and our clasp. And you don't need to watch me do that. You'll just be adding your own jump rings and the clasp of your choice to these two wire guard ends. And then we will try on and admire our bracelet. So here is the finished product, guys. What do you think? I hope yours turned out great too, and I'm sure it did. If you are newer to bead weaving, this is definitely a little bit more intermediate. So don't worry if this one takes a little bit more practice. And like I said, to easily adjust the length of your bracelet, you can add larger jump rings, you can add more jump rings, you can add a larger clasp. You can see that I'm using two jump rings here on this bracelet to give this one a little bit more wiggle room. And that gentle curve that it has automatically makes this really conform to the wrist so nicely. Here are three other variations on the same bracelet. This is the very first one I created. Like I said, totally inspired by the Glacier Lagoon collection from Eureka Crystal Beads, which I will link down below. All of their collections are absolutely amazing and I've unboxed them here on my channel. So if you haven't seen those, definitely check them out. Also, I will leave the links to everything you will need as well as a full materials list down below the video, so check that out too. And it's entirely possible that Eureka Crystal Beads may not have the exact color variations or styles of these honeycomb beads, but you are sure to find lots of other beautiful colors and variations if you want to check out their website. So as usual, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here for another tutorial. Hope you'll stay tuned for much, much more. Feel free to leave me a comment or question down below the video because I always love to hear from you. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. And as always, happy beading. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. For more content like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of my latest videos. You can check out the information section below this video for links to all my social media handles, recommended products, and my shop and blog at orchidnopal.com. Thanks for watching.